Now chapter 88, Lord Shiva saved from Rik Asura. it said those demigods demons and humans who worship Lord Shiva a strict renunciant usually enjoy wealth and sense gratification while the worshippers of the Supreme Lord Hari the husband of the goddess of fortune do not we wish to properly understand this matter which greatly puzzles us indeed the results attained by the worshippers of these two lords of opposite characters are contrary to what one would expect. Lord Shiva is always united with his personal energy, the material nature, manifesting himself in three features in response to the entreaties of nature's three modes. He thus embodies the threefold principle of material ego in goodness, passion, and ignorance. The sixteen elements have evolved as transformations of that false ego. When a devotee of Lord Shiva worships his manifestation in any one of these elements, the devotee obtains all sorts of corresponding enjoyable opulences. Lord Hadi, however, has no connection with the material modes. He is the supreme personality of Godhead, the all-seeing eternal witness who is transcendental to material nature. One who worships him becomes similarly free from the material modes. Your grandfather, King Yudhishthir, after completing his Ashvamedha sacrifices, asked Lord Achuta this very same question while hearing the Lord's explanation of religious principles. This question pleased Sri Krishna, the king's lord and master who had descended into the family of Yadu for the purpose of bestowing the highest good on all men. The Lord replied as follows as the king eagerly listened. He said, If I especially favor someone, I gradually deprive him of his wealth. Then the relatives and friends of such a poverty-stricken man abandon him. In this way he suffers one distress after another. When he becomes frustrated in his attempts to make money and instead befriends my devotees, I bestow my special mercy upon him. A person who has thus become sober fully realizes the Absolute as the highest truth, the most subtle and perfect manifestation of the Spirit, the transcendental existence without end. In this way, realizing that the Supreme Truth is the foundation of his own existence, he is freed from the cycle of material life. Because I am difficult to worship, people generally avoid me and instead worship other deities who are quickly satisfied. When people receive kingly opulences from these deities, they become arrogant, intoxicated with pride, and neglectful of their duties. They dare to offend even the demigods who have bestowed benedictions upon them. Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva and others are able to curse or bless one. Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma are very quick to curse or bestow benedictions, my dear King, but the infallible Supreme Lord is not. 
In this connection, an ancient historical account is related concerning how the Lord of Kalos Mountain was put into danger by offering a choice of benedictions to the demon Vrika. The demon Vrika, a son of Shakunis, once met Nodded on the road. The wicked fellow asked him which of the three chief gods could be pleased most quickly. Nara told him, Worship Lord Shiva and you will soon achieve success. He quickly becomes pleased by seeing his worshippers' slightest good qualities and quickly angered by seeing his slightest fault. He became pleased with ten-headed Ravan and also with Bana when they each chanted his glories like bards in a royal court. Lord Shiva then bestowed unprecedented power upon each of them, but in both cases he was consequently beset with great difficulty. Thus advised, the demon proceeded to worship Lord Shiva at Kedaranath by taking pieces of flesh from his own body and offering them as oblations into the sacred fire, which is Lord Shiva's mouth. Rikasura became frustrated after failing to obtain a vision of the Lord. Finally, on the seventh day, after dipping his hair into the holy waters at Kedaranath and leaving it wet, he took up a hatchet and prepared to cut off his head. But at that very moment, the supremely merciful Lord Shiva rose up out of the sacrificial fire, looking like the god of fire himself and grabbed both arms of the demon to stop him from killing himself just as we would do. By Lord Shiva's touch, Rikasura once again became whole. Lord Shiva said to him, My friend, please stop, stop. Ask for me whatever you want and I will bestow that boon upon you. Alas, you have subjected your body to great torment for no reason, since I am pleased with a simple offering of water from those who approach me for shelter. The benediction sinful Vrikha chose from the Lord would terrify all living beings. Vrikha said, May death come to whomever I touch upon the head with my hand. Upon hearing this, Lord Rudra seemed somewhat disturbed. Nonetheless, O descendant of Bharat, he vibrated Om to signify his assent, granting Vrikha the benediction with an ironic smile, as if giving milk to a poisonous snake. To test Lord Shambhu's benediction, the demon then tried to put his hand on the Lord's head. Thus Shiva was frightened because of what he himself had done. As the demon pursued him, Lord Shiva fled swiftly from his abode in the north, shaking with terror. He ran as far as the limits of the earth, the sky, and the corners of the universe. The great demigods could only remain silent, not knowing how to counteract the benediction. Then Lord Shiva reached the luminous realm of Vaikuntha, beyond all darkness, where the Supreme Lord Narayan is manifest. That realm is the destination of renunciants who have attained peace and given up all violence against other creatures. Going there, one never returns. The Supreme Lord, who relieves his devotees' distress, had seen from afar that Lord Shiva was in danger. Thus, by his mystic Yogamaya potency, he assumed the form of a brahmachari student with the appropriate belt, deerskin, rod, and prayer beads, and came before Vrikasura. The Lord's effulgence glowed brilliantly like fire. Holding kusha grass in his hand, he humbly greeted the demon. The Supreme Lord said, My dear son of Shakuni, you appear tired. Why have you come such a great distance? Please rest for a minute. After all, it is one's body that fulfills all one's desires. O oh, Mighty One, please tell us what you intend to do if we are qualified to hear it. Usually one accomplishes his purposes by taking help from others. Oh, 
thus questioned by the personality of Godhead in language that poured down upon him like sweet nectar, Rikka felt relieved of his fatigue. He described to the Lord everything he had done. The Supreme Lord said, If this is the case, we cannot believe what Shiva says. Shiva is the same Lord of the Pratas and Pishachas, whom Daksha cursed to become like a carnivorous hobgoblin. O best of the demons, if you have any faith in him because he is the spiritual master of the universe, then without delay put your hand on your head and see what happens. If the words of Lord Shambhu prove untrue in any way, O best of the demons, then kill the liar so he may never lie again. Thus bewildered by the personality of Godhead's enchanting, artful words, foolish Fricka, without realizing what he was doing, placed his hand on his head. Instantly his head shattered, as if struck by a lightning bolt, and the demon fell down dead. From the sky were heard cries of victory, obeisances, and well done. The celestial sages, pitas, and gandharvas rain down flowers to celebrate the killing of sinful Rikasura. Now Lord Shiva was out of danger. The Supreme Personality of Godhead then addressed Lord Girisha, who was now out of danger. Just see, O Mahadev, my Lord, how this wicked man has been killed by his own sinful reactions. Indeed, what living being can hope for good fortune if he offends exalted saints? What to speak of offending the Lord and spiritual master of the universe? Lord Hari is the directly manifest absolute truth, the supreme soul and unlimited ocean of inconceivable energies. Anyone who recites or hears this pastime of his saving Lord Shiva will be freed from all enemies and the repetition of birth and death. Thus ends the 88th chapter of the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, Lord Shiva Saved from Vrikasura.